for people unfamiliar with you, um, please just tell us your name, uh, a bit about your background, and really what you've been up to for the last 30, 40 years. I'm James Hansen. I'm now retired from NASA. I was a director of the Goddard Institute for Space Studies for 32 years. I'm now at Columbia University where I'm the director of Climate Science Awareness and Solutions, uh, which is a <coughs> program aimed at understanding climate change and informing the public and trying to influence uh, policies. Uh, my scientific background, I started out in astronomy, uh, wrote a master's thesis on the eclipse of the moon, and wrote my PhD thesis on Venus, on why is Venus so hot, which of course turns out to be that it has a lot of carbon dioxide. And that caused me to get interested in the Earth uh, because we have a planet in which the atmospheric composition is changing before our eyes. So it makes the Earth a more interesting planet than Venus or the others because people live on this one. So I uh, resigned as a principal. I actually had proposed an experiment to go to Venus, which was accepted. Furthermore, we proposed an experiment to go to Jupiter on the Galileo mission, and that was accepted also. Well, my two friends <laughs> took over. Actually, uh, yeah, Larry Travis took over the Pioneer Venus experiment and Andy Lasis Galileo experiment. Um, and I worked full time on trying to develop a computer model for the Earth's climate uh, to study the likely effects of the changing atmospheric composition. Guy McPherson is very pessimistic about humans surviving even 10 more years on the planet. What do you think? I think that's crazy. Uh, we're, you can't kill people that easily. But there is real, real reason to be concerned about uh, the long time scale. Um, the biggest threats are, I think, uh, the danger of large sea level rise. And we established most of our large cities on the coastlines. So if we continue to warm up the ocean such that it melts the ice shelves and causes many meter sea level rise, we will lose functionality of, of all those coastal cities and the uh, consequences would be enormous. And at the same time, we're also beginning to make the low latitudes uncomfortable which is going to create a pressure for migration out of those latitudes. The planet could become ungovernable if we let those things go on. So I, I, I think we really should be concerned about the future of the planet on the time scale of today's young people. So I don't think that in five or 10 years we're uh, going to <laughs> humanity is going to be leaving the planet. But I do think we have a huge threat. But, and it's kind of a crazy th situation because the truth is we could actually deal with this in a way that would be economically sensible. And it, if we make the price of fossil fuels honest gradually, it would move, it would force us in the direction of clean energies. And everybody would be better off. You know, we're killing 20,000 people a day from pollution, indoor and outdoor pollution, contributing about equally. We could, we, and that's from our dirty fuels. Uh, we need to move to clean energy. And the way to do that is to have a gradually increasing uh, fee or tax on the energy sources that are a problem. You have to do it gradually because you don't want to have a big economic disruption. But if you do it gradually, it in fact spurs the economy. It causes entrepreneurs to try to make money. They want to come up with the clean energies. Uh, so it's a solvable problem, but our politicians are not doing it. I thought, oh, the United States is a, 
is a, is a bad actor where we have the fossil fuel industry has too much power and they've bought our government. Well, so I went to more than a dozen countries and it's not that different in other countries where fossil fuel industry is very powerful. Uh, that's what uh, young people need to understand, that they have to influence this political system if they want to have a future. And it's something that they can do. They've proved that. In recent elections in the United States, the young people had a huge impact on who was elected. Uh, but they did not uh, demand the actions that are needed to assure their future. And that's partly because they didn't understand it, I think. Um, they need to uh, not let politicians get away with just marginal uh, little actions which have little impact on the, the global story. You know, we've had these big uh, international agreements, the Kyoto Protocol, the Paris Agreement. But then you make a graph of the global emissions, they keep going up, you know. So these agreements are, are nice pieces of paper, but um, they're not really changing our almost total dependence on fossil fuels for our energy. If there was unlimited money and total cooperation between countries, what technologies, solutions, or products exist to reverse climate change or take greenhouse gases out of the environment? Well, you know, the question of, of which technology should be used to take greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere, that's a question which should be answered by the uh, allowing the alternatives to compete rather than politicians making the choice, rather than the public making the choice. The public will make the choice by means of what they buy. You know, if you put a price on carbon, then products that use a lot of carbon, a lot of fossil fuels, will become relatively more expensive. And we will move then to alternatives. But to choose beforehand, which uh, technology is the winning one is a bad idea because you may choose something which is not the optimum solution. We, it's very hard to guess beforehand what is uh, the best solution. Why aren't the scientists talking about this more and, and taking more aggressive action? Yeah, well, scientists are talking about the science. What my problem with the scientists is that we haven't made clear enough the urgency of the issue. Um, and we, uh, we kind of understand each other, but I'm not sure the public understands us, especially the fact that, that we could uh, deal with the issue, um, but we're not, you know. So, we, we, you know, the United Nations, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, puts out these reports every five or six or seven years. Uh, they're very detailed, uh, complicated scientific reports, but we, we, we need to really tell the public, you know, oh, we're not, we're not solving the problem. So they make new scenarios, for example. Uh, and now they're making scenarios in order to keep the climate from going haywire. They're putting in negative emissions, huge amount of negative emissions. Well, what does that mean? That means you have to suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere. That's possible, but it takes energy to do that. And it's a, a little unlikely that we can do it at the scale that would be needed. So we need to, instead of just adding more scenarios with some unrealistic aspects to them, we need to say, whoa, you know, we're going too far. We've got to uh, make some dramatic changes in our energy sources. And I just 
I'm not sure that we have sufficiently clearly warned the public about just how difficult this problem is. Be, you know, the, the reason it's so difficult is because of the delayed response of the system. So the public doesn't see that much happening. They're beginning to see, okay, it does look like we're getting more of these events, uh, unusual storms and unusual floods, a hundred year flood occurring more than once a century. And, and uh, yeah, sea level is beginning to rise, but so far, you know, okay, Miami's getting a little bit of uh, water on their streets, but the, but the problem is that's just the beginning. And because of the delayed response, we're building in a much bigger response for today's young people. And uh, that's the kind of problem which is difficult to solve because people don't want to address a problem until they can see that it's real. Uh, now we're at the edge. We're beginning to see that it's real. And so this is the time that we had better get uh, active and actually move toward uh, clean energies in a very major way, not the marginal few percent that we're doing now.